Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel Physics Surgery. Here we are again bringing you a very interesting question which appeared in one of the Physics Olympiads. And also you can find this question in a very famous book called as Pathfinder which has a collection of a lot of good Olympiad problems. The beauty of this question is it's not just uh, for the aspirants of uh, Physics Olympiad but you could also see that uh, the, the technique that would be used in this question right, makes it a very good uh, candidate for the uh, preparation for IIT JE examination. Okay, so without much further ado, let me share the wording of the question with you. Yeah, this is the actual question given. So the reference of the page number, as you could see at the top from the Pathfinder, a ball is projected vertically upwards with a speed of 20 meter per second and return back to the ground with a speed 16 meter per second. Right. So the air resistance presence makes sure that the speed actually reduces. So he says in the third line, if the air resistance is proportional to the speed of the ball. This is a very important aspect, right? Find the air time, which is nothing but the time of flight of the ball, right? As usual, uh, acceleration of gravity at that particular uh, uh, problem there, right, has been given as 10 meter per second square. Okay, so acceleration due to gravity is given. So with this information, let's try to uh, find out the time of flight. So we want to pause and try this question. Uh, so please give it a try. So the kind of technique I'm going to use is actually going to avoid integration. Even though I said it is going to be an integration technique, right? I'll try to avoid as much integration as possible. So we want to give it a try and not do it by a lengthy method. So just pause the video here and then follow the solution I'm going to give. Right. So let's move ahead. So I've already pre-drawn a certain path in which a particle which is thrown up with a speed, let's suppose it's thrown up with a speed u and it comes back with the speed v, right? So I'll write it in general. So in the diagram, can you carefully see, I've marked the speed u with which it goes up. And by the time it returns down along the same path, right? let's say the final speed is v. Okay. Right. So instead of writing uh, components of velocity and directions for acceleration. So this is a slightly new technique, right? Where I've written the vector equation form. Okay, so mg bar is the weight vector and minus kv bar, right? I'm not saying minus kv bar is downward or upward. This minus represents that it is actually opposite the velocity vector. Okay, so it's proportionality constant k is not given. So I expect this to be eliminated in the final step of the answer. So please understand, this equation is not written just for particle going up, but throughout the motion. So when it is coming down, this minus sign will ensure that the back, uh, force of drag or air resistance, whatever you want to call it, actually acts opposite the direction of velocity. Okay, so that's the beauty of this particular step. So we are actually going to write this entire equation for the complete motion, okay? So I'll now integrate both sides over the time. Okay, so integrating both sides over time. Let's say, I write it as mg bar dt minus integration kv bar. So I'll bring k out because we know that it's a constant of proportionality and then write the v bar dt inside for my convenience. And on the other side, I'll do the same thing with mass m out integral a bar dt, okay, right. And uh, let's do the integration for the whole duration of time of flight, not just up or down. So the time limits would be zero to t for each of these integrals. Okay, right. Now the easiest of the three is the uh, leftmost one. So the yellow one, you could clearly see that this is a constant over the entire period, whether the particle is going up or down, this is a constant vector acting always downward. Can you see the acceleration to gravity is a constant vector downward. So this entire thing can come out and this would simply become an mg bar into t. So that's your first step. And uh, the second one, which is interesting. So this is by definition of kinematics, integration of velocity vector over time for any duration is nothing but displacement vector, okay, right? So that would be minus k into the displacement vector for the entire period, okay, right? This should be equated to mass into. Now, what is integration of acceleration vector over a period of time in kinematics? 
acceleration vector over a period of time, whether it is constant acceleration or variable, I think this by definition of acceleration and velocity relation would be simply the difference of velocity vector, the final velocity minus initial velocity, not the scalar part, but the vector difference. So I'll respect that aspect and write as V bar minus U bar. Okay, right. And since the particle returns back to the original position, I think you'll all agree the displacement is a null vector. So that's a zero bar. It's taken out. Okay. So which makes it uh, m g bar t this term and this term would be equal to each other. I think I can cancel m off on both sides. This m also gets cancelled. So it would be simply g bar t is equal to that d bar minus u bar. Still a vector equation. Now I'll take modulus on both sides. Okay, right. So when I take the modulus on both sides. The left hand side is a simple modulus that would be simply g capital t is equal to now the right hand side very interesting one see the velocity vector finally is downward initially it was upward so you're talking about subtracting two anti-parallel vectors and then taking a modulus i think the magnitude of that subtraction is nothing but addition of the two magnitudes okay addition of the two magnitudes okay so this would simply be in V plus u in magnitude. I've removed the bar. V and u are simple magnitudes. This gives you the value of time period is simply V plus u divided by g. And hence, value of t. I think V was given 16 meter per second, u was 20 meter per second, g was 10 meter per second square, which immediately shows you the answer as 3.6 seconds. So that's the interesting part. About this question. But see, uh, one of the ways of the solving problem could have been splitting the motion into the up ascent and descent, that is upward direction of motion and the downward direction of motion, integrate and then add the time of ascent and time of descent, two, three long pages of solution, and you still end up getting at this place. So all of this magic happened because of the uh, air resistance being proportional to velocity vector. Had this not been given, and if this was, let's say, proportional to V square or V cube, this magic would not have happened. So that's why this was a unique situation. So this kind of air resistance you would see in future in a topic called as Stokes law in viscosity. And uh, we'll try to make another video uh, on that particular problem. Okay, right. Thanks for listening. Right. And see you again in another video.